Hey guys, Sean B and today I just want to share with you guys my quick RTA tier list. I just made this based on my experience doing RTA in the top 300 and also my experience doing RTA in general. Back when I was a uh, lowly C3 player before I got blessed by the Lord and Savior come to us. When you look at the tier list, don't think too much about why your unit is not even on the tier list or why is your unit like here and not like there, that kind of deal because tier list is really more of like a popularity contest. If you turn on the RTA replay section, you can pretty much tell what is the meta because one side will try to go first and one side will try to go turn two and just want to take all the damage and survive. And the RTA experience can kind of just summarize in the 90 and above and you rarely see anything in between. But I saw some stuff in between and I want to talk about them. So in the highest ranking right here, we'll be taking a look at the OP broken LD95. If you have one of these, then your ranking will improve drastically if you know how to use it. As you may have seen, uh, we made some improvement <laughs> in this season. Quite an improvement, I would say. So I banned Ragdoll pretty much, I think, 99% of the time. I hate this unit. I don't want to deal with enemy constantly getting attack bar. And I use a lot of Oracle, so he get free attack bar like all the time. I hate it. And I ban it all the time. And if you want to deal with it, you have to pick a certain way. You have to pick Molong and only Musha and trying to kill it. And you might face RNG with Violent Proc when you're trying to go Bruiser stuff. It's annoying. For people who are trying to go turn one, Ragdoll is the ultimate nemesis rune because when they go for the AoE with Chiwu or with Water Ryu or with Gianna or with anything, they will crit and the enemy will gain enough attack bar to Valen proc out of stun and uh, shit on you. So uh, this guy is really annoying. Gianna is definitely broken, you know, strip stun and uh, constant damage, constant turn cycling back to more bomb and strip stun. Is a, it's a dumb unit. It's really, really strong, but it is also one of the oldest Nat 5 in the game together with Ragdoll. So these two have been here for a long, long time. And uh, I, I don't know if Comptos will ever do anything about them, but they're just way too strong, okay? Uh, would they nerf them? I have no idea. They nerfed them once, didn't really make a huge difference. Maybe they're gonna do it again. Maybe they're just gonna buff new every Nat 5 like on Yoki to shit on Gianna because when I see on Yoki, Literally, I see the boogeyman, yeah? He's just gonna grab me and uh, step on me and teabag me and all that good stuff. And uh, I hate this unit so much because you cannot stun it. And it will wake up out of stun, do some massive damage. This guy doesn't need to crit. So his damage is very consistent. And uh, on Yoki Cleave is one of the most disgusting cleave out there. It's way too strong. Next, we have Pontos, the best in the immunity and protection department. We know this guy, I think two seasons ago. Pretty good, you know, gotta say, the best there is. One Violent Proc changed the game. Speed Leader, Awakened to Resist, I think, has AoE Silence as an immunity unit to provide extra utility. Insane. Keaton Dashing, pretty much um, the best in the control department on his own. He's like an army on his own. Tian Lang is one of the best counterpick unit because there's a lot of attack bar gain mechanic in pretty much any kind of team. So he will destroy that and then he'll gain a turn, despair stun, strip your entire team, defense break all the time, very annoying unit. And then Nephthys is equivalent to Keaton Dasheng, but she's not a bitch. She will actually defense break, allow your team to finish the fight fast. Keaton Dasheng is more of like, a, I'm just gonna be here and uh, poke you and poke you and poke you again. Just be annoying, yeah? Uh, Han is really insane. Yeah, a unit can destroy something immediately and stun is just, it just crazy. The top tier in my opinion are all already Nat 5 because uh, they're just really strong. Yeah, <laughs> it's just dumb strong. Next, we'll take a look at the popular elemental unit. I think Sierra is one of the most popular unit right now because she's just way too good and we all know that. I don't think we have to uh, discuss too much about how OP Sierra is. We've been here long enough. Hey Gang, I think is one of the best elemental unit right now in RTA because it counters Gianna, it counters the other art master, it is annoying when you run more, which is not very consistent, then he's also very annoying. Chi and Triton will push down attack bar, so they are very strong against Hey Gang, 
but they can also miss the attack by pushback so that can also be annoying and uh he's just great his strip is 100 activation rate so it's quite consistent he brings glancing debuff which means you can use him to strip and then shit on vert and laugh at the revenge that will always glance because you put glancing debuff on vert and uh he will never crit on your hey gang like ever so how you ruin him you want to give him your best despair will set and he need to move in front of whatever aoe setup you are having or if you are not having any good despair rune you can run swift to be you know faster than whatever you are using like gany changpeng okeanos Ciara, savannah all that stuff so when enemy team strip your team you can attack bar strip the enemy team you know uno reverse card them and uh you unload everything so he's just really, really good. I first picked Sierra Hey Gang because, you know, I don't want to give Hey Gang to uh, other people. Obviously, I run Gianna, but I think um, Sierra Hey Gang first pick is just good in general if you are running the control route. Changpeng is absolutely dominating, still very, very strong unit. Multi-hit pushback attack bar, so work really well on fire element because if you glance the first hit, you land the next one, you're still good because he push back a lot which is one hit that land the pushback. And then he also bring defense break for you to do even more damage and a secondary strip. You should not run your Changpeng as your primary stripper. A lot of people I see, they tell me, hey, um, I rely on my Changpeng to strip. And I'm like, that's why you're not going up in ranking because he's not stripping. And you know that, you've been there before. Don't lie to me and pretend that this guy will be your main stripper. It just doesn't work, okay? If I have to compare, at least go with the Fire Fairy to a that thing strip better. But if you but if you run him as the main control, he's just really good. I run mine on Despair Rune, he has two AoE skill. The skill three has multi-hit, so I can stun fire unit better because the first hit can glance, but then the next two hit may not, and I might stun the fire unit. So um so he's just really amazing. Just absolutely insane yeah and then we have leo who is the core of a lot of turn two team when you break the speed of all these units they're not very very good anymore and he neutralized speed buff speed debuff all that stuff so they will not you know take turns and uh, have a train around you and you can actually fight back leo is just great and then we have lulu the strongest most annoying most discussed healer in the game right now because one violent proc from this unit can change the game, especially when it put immunity on another unit like Karno so that you cannot touch him anymore. Because after turn one, you kind of run out of strip already. And if Lulu violent proc and put immunity on Karno, you, you just can't do anything. You just sit there and watch Karno just rip you a new hole. And, uh, and that's about it. <laughs> Karno Lulu is just dumb. One violent proc from them is, is devastating. Molly is also really good because Molly doesn't rely on cooldown to heal. So we have a lot of cooldown control and stun unit here. But as long as Molly can move and violent proc, she can heal a lot very quickly. So I think Molly is here. And these two are the main source of healing in almost 99% of the matches that you are seeing in RTA right now. And Karno, once again, he is rising or should I say has risen to be one of the best, if not the best, fire CC unit in the game. You see him first pick everywhere because he's just dumb good when he lands his slow and stun and push back at the same time, which I know you guys have many fun memory with that where he completely destroy your team with one violent proc. And even after you reset him with your Changpan Gane, don't be happy just yet because he can provoke you with skill one, violent proc, provoke another one, and now after you reset Karno, he has control two of your unit. And then he go with skill two, gain attack bar to skill three, and then you hit the quit button. And that's about it. We also have Diana here being one of the most annoying turn two unit because she can gain attack bar. Whatever can gain attack bar is very good for turn two, like Diana, Karno, Juno, because they are not stationary. They can move and they can try to fight back and uh, one Valen proc from Diana and Ciara or Changpeng might just die like immediately if you build Diana correctly. So Lulu will be on speed HP resist for the most part nowadays and uh, Molly will probably be speed HP HP, violent, violent, you know, all violent. 
Karno is probably speed HP HP as well with uh, additional damage with whatever stat you can have mostly speed and HP and uh, Diana is probably on some HP crit damage HP for some thick damage output but for Diana remember to get additional damage by attack because when she transform into the human form where you do the main bulk of damage she are doing damage based on attack and she will have a lot of attack stat because if you read the description you will see that the HP will be transferred and turned into attack and then additional damage by attack will give her more attack so uh, trying to get your Diana to hit like I think minimum 2.5k you do a decent amount of damage on the enemy especially for those who don't run their Ciara or Changpeng or Savannah or Gany very tanky then you're gonna rip them apart there's some LD that are really really good as well Narsha is the modern day Daphnis back in the day Daphnis is really crazy but Narsha is just that you know strip defense break one shot your unit no problem I've seen a Narsha with zero setup one shot my Ciara with 30k HP a thousand defense just one shot I know what to do I can't protect my Ciara <laughs> no no setup whatever so uh just really really good on her own and she's really really fast as well not slow like Daphnis and constantly get faster we have Wunsa the fastest stripper in the game I think that is Laura now but Wunsa boosts attack bar so that's a different story okay Laura can't compare boost attack bar doesn't crit which means very good against ragdoll so uh really really good and everybody has some sort of will runes anyway so using him is pretty easy we have a chroma to solo control comms and she also has this uh, lower crit chance passive thingy that might or might not work you will see a chroma shine more with g3 player and uh, you will see a lot of lower rank player complain that this this thing doesn't do anything but a chroma is really really strong when you have good runes on her and she really shy if this is like a conqueror tier list i'll probably put her down here but because she's really really good with good runes she's kind of unkillable and she also do some nasty damage and the two turn silence can really make or break a cc unit so uh to me she is a nightmare and then we have the usual suspect of control unit here we have Poseidon, which is one of my favorite, if not the most important part of my team due to his non-glancing, very good against the wind unit steel, and also slow debuff. So he helped me control Dyna better than any other water unit in the game can, and he's really good. Also, two turn silence on Lulu, Molong, and Karno allow me to uh, destroy their potential violent proc so he is just absolutely amazing i run him on despair speak good damage accuracy so that he can do damage and land his debuff on his unit i use this thing i need to run attack but after missing way too many pushback and silence fuck it accuracy it is but that's me other people will put poseidon probably i don't know where you know poseidon's gonna be somewhere else but to me poseidon is the king of the sea three uh, it's just whatever dude <laughs> i think gany might go up i think gany just insane gany win rate in world championship is also insane because he's just too versatile and he's still really really good volantis kind of drop a little bit because hey gang exists i'm not fearful of volantis anymore because i will have either the gianna stun volantis or the hey gang cleansing volantis nonsense so he's still very strong because hey gang is not a free to play unit so Overall, I think he's still a very annoying unit. If you run Chi or Triton, you can push back his attack bar enough so that he will not gain enough attack bar, even if he he does the skill one thing. So if you run Chi or Triton, Volantis is not a very, very big problem if you have decent speed tuning. I think he's still a very strong unit because more is still a very popular stripper and his attack bar absorption is not the most consistent thing. Juno for turn two is still dumb very strong especially when she get lucky and you miss your attack by pushback then uh she's quite a problem especially when oki Changpeng cannot really control juno very well so you see someone with like uh siara savannah oki Changpeng, then juno will be a very very big threat so juno usually make it through the band pick most of the time so hey if you are a turn two player you gotta pay attention to your juno so a typical turn two team will be Karno, Lulu, Juno, Diana 
and then depending on the element situation of the attacking team then you will pick your last unit accordingly but on the flip side if they're not running Carno Juno they're running some sort of let's say Molly and Diana and Lulu and then they are running some sort of wind panda some wind monkey because it really depends on the order that you draft the team that will dictate the elements of the enemy team a lot of them if you draft Carno Juno first then enemy is gonna go heavy water so you want to keep your draft a little bit more diverse so usually people don't pick two of the same element at the same time because they can also pick two of the stronger element at the same time and then when you're trying to come back with another different element pick they can already ban that so on the flip side if you are going with let's say very heavy fire water they're gonna go in poseidon and they're gonna go in with a chow a water monkey king and it really really damage you if you're going with no fire at all then they're going in with Changpeng, savannah charlotte gani and it's really hard to come back so uh, keep your option open when you draft okay we have Nikki here. Nikki is actually quite a tough unit to use as well. It's like a chroma situation. If you have good runes, good additional damage by attack artifact, then you will see Nikki completely shred the enemy with skill three. But if you don't have good rune, then you will just treat Nikki as a Colleen pretty much. So um, this is a tough choice to be put this high. But I've seen this unit completely murder so many team and uh want me as well so i need to put her here samaf is one of the most popular speed leader right now for speed contest samaf triton is a very popular duo to maximize the most speed you can have for a stripper com or samaf is very good to be stolen from enemy cleave team because when they go cleave they might want to pick Samaf to get first turn but if you take it away and pick an asher then you might as well win the speed contest already so very very good unit and a lot of people run sort of um, no healing CC com and you maybe ban the Gany or Changpeng or take the Gany and Changpeng and Samaf will be a Tam Bomb on attack with damage attack bill and after they kill everything they have to kill Samaf and then they die to the Samaf revenge. We have the two speed leech stripper here. Um, more is much more balanced now due to his inconsistency. Chi was rising back to the meta thanks to the consistency. But each have their own weakness. So Chi will be weak against Vert, but more will be very inconsistent. So depending on your draft, if you have secondary stripper like Hei Gang and Cheng Peng, you are free to go with more, but you are drafting Gany Poseidon then you don't have any secondary stripper you might want to go with a chivo so depending on your draft your unit availability that you want to use different unit more will probably do more damage thanks to the multi-hit the constant turn cycling so he's more suited for additional damage artifact being on chivo is more of a uh, single hit thing but the random skill one sleeve from chivo can be quite devastating and also Chigu has the option to go for the single target strip to not trigger let's say Ragdoll attack bar gain or the Vert itself because if you use a water stripper like more you can still trigger the Vert revenge and he can still crit you. So pros and cons. I think Yan Hong is still absolutely amazing very very fast unit is very hard to outspeed a Yan Hong on swift rune and she can strip boost the entire enemy attack bar. It's like a premium Barbara that can heal and be very very annoying. We have the entire line of Oni Musha here. I think each of them serve very different function, but they're very, very strong. As you can see, Oni Musha, after being introduced into the game, is now one of the core family for damage dealing in the game because they're very consistent. They bring defense break and they do hella damage. Light one used to be broken, but now I think it's more balanced. It is not easy to use him because if you notice in the top row, you will see a lot of defense breaker, bomb damage, stun, push back attack bar when he's stunned he's no better than any any other tanky unit i haven't found a problem with kinky anymore but uh that's me you know i'm i'm a privileged double bomb user but honestly with poseidon and changpeng he's fairly easy to be controlled so i wouldn't put him way too high like how he used to be so it's gonna be here but he's still really good when enemy runs no damage calm you see that you know quite a fair bit and when you have no damage, Kinky is a terrifying unit to deal with. Fuki. 
is a tanky speed HP, HP kind of deal. The more HP you lose, the more raw damage you are doing to the enemy. It's like a fancy Ramagas. It's really, really good. So when enemy don't pick any fire unit and you draft him, he's very hard to kill. He heals back with his attack and he defense break. And if you poke him and you don't kill him, he might return with like 20, 30k hit very easily. It's a very scary unit. Kaki on the other hand focus more on raw damage, instant damage. It works really well with Molong or just works really well in general as a damage dealer together with a unit like Fran for attack buff and he is a terrifying damage dealer and you will see Kaki cleave with on Yoki you will see Ragdoll user pick Kaki as well to take away the counter pick to Ragdoll and when you see a lot of wind unit and Kaki can just shred them easily way too fast Suki is more underrated under the radar a little bit but is very good if they pick let's say Karno, Lulu, Molly, Juno Suki is uh, it's gonna give them hell because how are they gonna kill a Suki? And you can build like a bruiser speed HP attack Suki and just stay in the fight for a while so that you can reach that maximum attack stat that can be built up via the passive. You can shred them easily. But he's kind of underrated because wind control unit is really, really popular. So picking him as a turn two unit is not easy. And turn one player don't really wanna mess around with, you know, a Suki because most people have like a Kaki maxed out for early RTA days and then you have a Fuki maxed out for your guild content. Suki is still hidden in the shadow waiting for more skill up to be put on him and he can start showing his face more in the RTA meta. I think Dark Demon is dumb and amazing and fun and just really really strong. No, no special comment about strategy or whatever because <laughs> this guy is just funny and he's ridiculous sometimes. Vert, the core, the backbone of all the poor player way to deal with the oppression of the fucking filthy rich player because what else can they do? Really, if you don't have the nemesis rune that is, you know, correct for the nemesis build, then the only way to gain attack bar, to gain ground against people who are absolutely murder other player with these you know Ciara, Changpeng, Poseidon, Heigen, uh, Gianna player Vert is pretty much one of the only way Triple Revenge build for maximum RNG tilting machine If you want to be really careful you only pick Vert when you see two or more unit that cannot stun and are very weak to Vert Any combination of Chi Wu, Changpeng, Savannah very weak to the Vert and a vert will destroy them if they don't ban the vert. But it's still a gamble. But it is a gamble that you have to take, unfortunately. So um, so you will see a lot of these units in RTA. The things below are kind of the replacement, the order option, the stuff that you have to use because you don't own the best in slot. So I'm gonna divide them into aggressive and defensive. Might not be correct, but I see them once in a while and they are kind of justified to be used in the meta. Of course, we are missing a lot of unit here, but I don't see them ever. So if I don't see them, then what's the point of putting them in a, uh, in a tier list? Because they're just going to be down there in a the lower tier. And what's the point, right? So for the aggressive, these are more for like going first, killing fast, go home quick and uh, get lunch or dinner. Barbara used to be up there, but with the lack of consistency, it's very hard to ruin her to hit hard and boost enough attack bar and maybe do something after that and when you miss the strip single target you lose damage and if you don't boost enough attack bar it's very hard for speed tuning she's a very complicated unit but she's good like she's real good when you build her well you might run a slower vile build and use it as a bruiser but i think suki is just way better more consistent and you know more available for a lot more people so if I want to recommend a water unit that can defense break and you can use it to fight the long game against heavy bruiser calm that maybe not pick a Diana, then uh, Suki I think is much better option. We have auto stripper here that fall off a little bit like Joe Gun used to be pretty crazy but without a speed buff. I rarely see this unit anymore. Whenever I see Jogun must be a very, very fast comp and you need the attack buff to cleave. 
but without a speed buff, his utility fall off drastically. And with the rise of Hey Gang, people know how to use this guy. It is just hard to use Jogan anymore. And also, when you strip without involving any attack bar, it is harder to use because you cannot help with the speed tuning of your team. Trident is still good because he's fast and he strip 100% chance, he push back attack bar, provide silence for two turn. He's still a very, very good unit, but with Vert running around everywhere, using Triton will give you a heart attack, like, you know, an actual old person. Look at this guy. Look at his, look at Triton. He might look, you know, sexy and uh, he has muscle and all that stuff, but he's, he's dying to Vert, okay? He just cough every time you have to strip a Vert. Laura, due to the base speed buff, she become quite good as a stripper on the spare rune. Pretty amazing at the job as well, stripping and providing extra control after that. But once again, no attack power, very hard to use. If she buff something else and not defense, maybe speed? Ooh, I think, I think a Laura user will be very, very happy. Asher to try and get turn 1 or steal turn 1 away from the enemy is still a very classic pick. Free to play as well, you can use him. It is not easy to use him because he only boosts your attack bar and speed buff. He doesn't strip. With that boost, you can use the strip and not use the boost, but most people who pick Asher want the base speed and the boost. So uh, you gotta be very careful with what you are drafting in. If you don't run enough impactful follow-up, then you're gonna be having a lot of problem if you pick Asher. We have the Fire Sky Surfer here, being the new hottest bomber. It is not very popular yet, but I think he is very, very amazing because you can land that one turn bomb on the Annabelle and then she's gonna eat the bomb. But bomb is a very inconsistent thing and you plan all your hope into a bomb, it will probably fail. So um, he can't be top tier, but I think he's strong. Belenus strong, but elemental weakness make him weak. Ethna with the lack of um, control and the stun might miss as well, but she's like um, Esha. Turn one contest, high base speed, going for the fast stun on the more, and you're good to go. Still a very solid unit. Let's keep one thing straight. I might be talking down on some unit, but if I put you into the tier list, I've seen you being used before with some degree of success. I have lost to the unit before. If you make it here, it's not bad, yeah? The bad ones are the one that's not even here in the tier list. Wet Jet is not as crazy as before, but still a very unique unit with speed lead and attack bar boost in one unit. Very, very interesting unit for turn one, but the buff is not too relevant unless they change his buff to something else. He'll remain being in the middle. Wind Bison, the sad brother of the Fire Bison. His control is lackluster, his AoE gets shit on by Vert, and yeah, it's just a lackluster control unit. And with that strip into reset and skill 3, he reminds you of Nephthys, and you miss like all the time. Wind Monkey King, very aggressive damage dealer, stripper, stun, but also the lack of impactful control compared to other unit over here makes his control not very good not as consistent with the stun as well but when you don't see win unit then he, he's a he's a force to be reckoned with tyrone to me feels like a budget nephthys it's a speed lead cc unit and when you need double speed lead in the com and you're running triton as one of your stripper let's say you run triton and joe gun you don't have any speed lead in your strippers you need speed it somewhere else and it will be tyrone tyrone can be there to freeze and then if you're lucky violent proc into a pushback but then his freeze doesn't involve any attack bar so they can violent proc out immediately i've seen that before but he's still a speed lead control with slow debuff so it's still very strong bearing the budget gianna is also pretty strong and I don't think people use him enough because I think his strip is really, really amazing. Two turn silence once again, completely nullifying violent procs. So I think he's a, he's an amazing stripper. If you have him, you should use him. We have Marsha for damage, but really hard to use. If you have Ragdoll, you probably appreciate Marsha more. There's not a lot of situation we can bring this unit in because she can't snipe people in turn one like Narsha. She can strip and defense break. Marsha require you to set up a little bit for damage so that she can you know maybe get a stripper in to get rid of the wheel runes but she's okay when they try to go with let's say juno molly diana and and that is like their key thing and you get rid of whatever the form unit is 
Juno, Molly, Diana would die to a Masha. So you can incorporate her into your team like a last pick when you don't see any water threat. And uh, the main meal will be no immunity. Yeah, especially Juno. Masha loves a good Juno. Oberon and Daphnis, the one-shot brother, you will see them in Cleavecom still. Oberon's definitely better. Better because you don't have to like go through all the stripping, defense break, all that nonsense that you might miss. Half the time, he's just one-shot. Way better. Daphnis is getting more popular because people are hiding behind immunity with Bruisercom again. So Daphnis one-shotting Diana is quite often the thing now, but that will require you to build quite a strong Daphnis to one-shot like 40, 50k Diana with artifact damage reduction from fire as well maybe so using Daphne is like a gamble and you need good runes to use it too so it's definitely not a thing three star stripper i'm gonna put her here with so debuff very good not bad so if you are like free to play and you got the bearing hoh and you need another one then um the fire fairy three star will be the stripper of choice but you need to max her skill so that's just the inconvenience right there but hey if you have nothing better then uh, Tyrone and Iselia, they are made for one another, okay? She stripped the slow debuff, Tyrone push back attack bar, and you're good to go. So these three units can be the core of a lot of people budget control comp, yeah? And then you put in whatever nat 5 you have, whatever that is. We have Dark Monkey King. The day where they buff his stun to 100% chance in skill 3, I'll put him here. But for now, I'll put him here because... You can't expect him to do much. This guy works whenever he wants. You can't expect him to do much. It's very annoying. Jemiah is a very interesting pick because when people pick Jemiah, I can never really tell what their intention is. He's a good generic speed lead with great damage and cleanse and reset cooldown. He has a lot of utility in his kit. He's a very wild card. What kind of speed tuning they're running? Are they running off will to counter Gianna? Are they running will slowers in the team to reset the entire team cooldown after they use? Seeing Jemiah is always an interesting thing. Make me smile. People who use Jemiah. Great stuff. Charlotte, the budget chunk punk in my opinion. I've been using a lot more Charlotte recently just to feel a different feeling. And I gotta say, Chung Pung just hit all the right spot. And Charlotte just lacking. Lacking in many, many ways. Her control is not good. Her stun is not consistent. And he, she doesn't influence cooldown. So they can just proc out of their stun. Or uh, the Vert Revenge. Uh, just, Charlotte just hard to use. I put Bastet here not because Cleavers. But because Bastet in general can be a strong... Unit to be picked into Oki Chung Pung Com. If you realize that you don't have to run any speed lead and you actually want to just do more raw damage, you are switching the team a little bit and you run, let's say, Oki Chung Pung and then you see Lulu stuff, you can pick up a stat and an ignore defense unit and you're just trying to kill them quickly. That can work too. So having a Bastet in your arsenal and learning how to use her can give you advantage over people who are trying to tank and cleanse debuff, but you are not bringing debuff anymore, you know? Switch it a little bit, you never know. You start out with Sierra Oki, and then you pick Bastet Daphnis, and they'll be like, oh, oh, that, I didn't prepare for that. I prepared for Gany Chung Pung. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have Ken, who used to be next to more, I would say. Um, actually, no, actually Ken's probably you know what? I don't see Ken anymore. Ken can go down. Like, Ken just can't. Never mind. We have Shan here. Ooh, that aggressive speed buff damage. I see him once in a while. He'll be drafted as a last pick in a control com and he provides speed buff damage like um, Savannah, but Savannah is way better. But still, he has the stun of the damage. It's actually not too shabby. We have the Light Polar Queen. I have no way how to pronounce her name. They're all kind of similar. Eleanor, Eleanor, Ele something. I have no idea. Let me try. Light Polar Queen. Her name is Eleanor. All right, Eleanor. And she's a very interesting draft as well because she increased, no, decreased cool time. She has a lot of debuff in her. She's usually be on despair now to utilize that AOE and then turn cycling into another AOE. She can buff herself, buff Ganymede or buff whatever. She gave 
like Daphnis or Oberon double one shot immediately. It's a very fun and exciting and mysterious unit that I really, really like seeing when I play an RTA. Bomb unit like Sien is still very good when the enemy doesn't have any immunity. He's more like defensive aggressive because you pick this guy and you usually don't think he's gonna go first. You can. You can set up a CN to be faster than Ciara and you can rely on the bomb wombo combo. But usually you see him pick last, but he's a very aggressive last pick because hey, bombs kind of shit sometimes because it will not land and then he does nothing. I've been there before. Almost win the game. By the time CN move, miss three bomb. I lose. Happens before. But if you land bomb, then it's gonna be uh it's gonna be tough for most CC com. They don't have a lot of HP, they have no way to heal back. No way to cleanse and the bomb is gonna pop their, their HP bar to like one third easily. Then we have the defensive lineup. So I'm not really tearing them in like 55, 65. They are all kind of the same to me because it really depends on what you have, what is available to you and how you can use them, which is more important than like, I think giving them numbers. So uh, combined with Lulu and Juno and Dinah and Molly and Carno, then the last option or the two last option can be somewhat here. Hathor is getting back into the meta. She should be like here next to Gany, but I hate this unit. <laughs> so much, it's so boring to use and to fight against. It's just so boring in general because you're not doing anything to the enemy. But then her two turn sleep is gonna be the anti-violent prop for Karno and Lulu, which is really good too. Like she's really good. She's not here because she's popular in the meta, but when she's used and used in the correct spot, then she's real, real good. Like Ciara, Gianna, Genny Hathor. I don't need to do AoE damage. I bomb them one by one and Hathor will be the perfect unit. But I just can't bring myself to use this dumb thing. It's just boring. Yeah, we have Leona here for last pick when they have a defense break. We know that already. We have Molong here for big void damage. You can build Molong on Vampire or Violent and he's still really, really good. You want additional damage with HP or Speed and whichever you are using Molong into, let's say you find yourself using Molong against a lot of wind unit, you want damage on wind. If you're using Molong against water unit, you want damage on water. But Molong can be both defensive and offensive. You can see team like Fran, Molong, Kaki, they are all like 300 speed and they just like one shot a unit without thinking too much about how much HP you have because Molong is dumb in that regard that he's just gonna do 70% HP and then Kaki with attack buff we do the rest of the work very easily. But to me Molong is not a problem. As a control player I think Molong provides nothing to the team because what I'm scared of are passive, are attack bar gaining, are passive healing, passive cleansing. Molong does none of that shit and when he violent proc he will either not kill anything because he can't one shot something immediately and his AoE stun is not the most crazy. It does stun sometimes. I've lost to Molong Violent Proc out of stun to stun my entire team before. But in general, when I see a Molong, I'm okay. When I see a Karno, I'm not okay. <laughs> he Violent Proc out, I know I'm done. The two healers that are a little bit lower tier, Shushu, the budget Lulu, or the other Lulu. Sometimes you will see people take Lulu and then the opponent gets Shushu. Shushu is also really good at healing and providing immunity, but he doesn't provide that one turn immunity with the skill too, which is quite crucial. And he doesn't have AoE cleanse, but the raw healing is really good. It's like an improved aerial because he provides immunity with skill 3. Fran is not as popular as before because Fran cannot AoE cleanse with one single violent proc. <laughs> Lulu is just crazy, but Fran is still a very good option for aggressive comm that is like a defensive comm. Actually, Fran is more aggressive. Let me put Fran here, even as a healer, you see Fran in comm that wants that attack buff, that wants the extra damage they can get. Amelia is definitely more defensive here. And then we have Anvil, usually built off will to cleanse Gianna. Or just a water healing unit in general to deal with the Karno and Okeanos. They both fire, they have a chance to glance on the Annabelle, they have a chance to not land anything on Annabelle, and Annabelle can AoE cleanse and things are back to usual. Rika last pick, maximum resistant build will be the nightmare of teams that is like full win, 
and they have no way to uh, control the Rika. Like Savannah missed the pushback, Changpeng missed the pushback, Rika start going crazy and they lose. Wind Panda is a very, very good defensive unit. Not top tier like Diana because he can't instantly gain a turn and then completely murder one unit with a violent proc. But he can still gain attack by, he's not too stationary and he can bring defense break. He's good with artifact additional damage by defense and he's annoying to uh, to kill at the end game. And when he picks glass into a full water team, he is gonna solo you. Really strong. Icarus should be next to Molong here. Very, very good unit, defensive or offensive or aggressive because of the one shot damage. And you can pick her and Molong in your CC comm when you see the nonsense healer because you can one shot them. When you see Ragdoll, you see Leo, then you can also pick Molong Icarus. They can be offensive or, you know, defensive. Really, really strong. Pra has a defensive Yon Hong in my opinion. Strip, heal, turn cycling, and very, very good. You know, a non-stationary support unit is very important. Same goes with Abelio. Abelio can get an attack bar out of nowhere and scare the shit out of you with AoE heal and quad provoke. And because he's water, they can't control him that easily. And unit that do damage slowly like Karno or Okeanos, they will have to touch that 30% threshold and cannot one-shot the unit and Abelio will steal the show. We have LD unit like Pater or Nyx. Used to be pretty crazy, especially Pater, but with this pushback meta, it's not that crazy anymore. Chao was trying to get into the meta. I think Chao is quite good, actually, when you pick him right into, let's say, they run Oki, Karno, Lulu, Molly, Juno. Then Chao is like force ban because how do you kill a Chao? You can't stun him. He does a lot of damage. He does more damage as time goes by, actually. And he just a very strong unit when you pick him right. Shizuka is a wild card option. It's like Jamaya to me. You see Shizuka, you're like, ooh, what, what, what you doing? <laughs> very, very fun unit when things go right for her. Fire Monkey King is actually not bad if you draft enough protection for him. Then he is a very annoying unit together with things like Chao as well. Antares is a cornerstone of countering Diana. You see Diana all the time. You see Antares and Diana being drafted together. <laughs> but in, I think, China qualifier or EU qualifier shows that when you when you believe in your Antares, it will do the right things for you. Iliana is not that good anymore. Yeah, immunity unit just suffer a lot from all these stripper. Like, a huge stripper is not a problem nowadays. Everybody has some. So immunity unit like this, it's just hard to hard to use. We have Laika here. Personally, I'm a Laika fan because Leo, I see every single time. So Laika just solo Leo team a lot, a lot of time. 3v1, 4v1, I've seen as well. Because usually there'll be one unit on the enemy team that kill Leo. Wait, that kill Laika. If you can get rid of that one threat that kill Laika, Laika will solo Leo, Lulu, Molly, Juno combined. No problem. Raijo is a wild card as well. Very similar to other water unit. He is also water and he directly destroy things like Karno and Okeanos very easily. If you see yourself facing and losing to a lot of fire control, then Raijo is the one for you. Jagger is very similar to that, but uh, he doesn't gain attack bar. I don't like this unit at all. I still see a lot of high rank player use it with some success, but I personally hate Jagger because he doesn't move and he just die. Yeah. Lima is a different breed. When you put triple revenge on this thing, <laughs> she'll bait your AoE stripper thinking, oh, must be on Vio Despair Revenge. No, she is triple revenge. And then she revenge, put up the thing, and you're done. <laughs> pretty much. It's like a premium vert to me. But, you know, Vio Despair build is also pretty good for general support use. But I think compared to Pontos, with that multiple turn protection, she's seen rather lackluster. Wind Monkey, easily control, easily shut down, but if they run some sort of like, let's say Gany, Changpeng, One Healer, they don't have like raw stun and they don't have a fire unit, then Wind Monkey last bit can be, can be quite good into, you know, the core that is Lulu, Karno, Dina, Juno stuff. Viva Chell is a tough one to use. I still see Reply Viva Chell in high rank once in a while, but I honestly don't know what the hell she does. 
<laughs> the switch hp thing like you gotta time it really really well the speed tuning is really hard to to get a good moment and you need like specific comp with her i just i just don't like her a lot but that's me though i i don't find the unit at all and i don't see myself liking the unit at all as well carbine a very strong win unit when you see enemy running water ryu because the first turn multi-hit strip from a water unit will ensure that you get into the stands immediately and the follow-up control will allow you to gain free attack bar because they're gonna glance in the in the hidden aim stands and you're gonna pop the Ciara or whatever on the enemy team usually you see like vampire attack with damage attack very fun unit Douglas also vampire attack with damage attack you see no stun you see no water unit you see a Ganny heart or son of a bitch then Douglas there for you solo teams man solo team like Chi Wu Chi Wu Ganny Chang Peng Juno Douglas just punched them one by one Josephine is kind of it's kind of underrated but then I hate Josephine because I run Gianna Auto Stripper has no problem dealing with Josephine that's the problem strip reset with Ganny and then she's a sitting duck Lydia is like a lock sack turn to if you miss the chance to kill she kill you kind of deal it's very funny to see and uh, it's pretty interesting Vanessa Triana for the combo not really the most amazing thing because resetting cooldown is pretty much uh, everybody shenanigan nowadays and cooldown is what they all have and Vanessa Triana is very stationary as well but then one person from EU proved me wrong called Livid and he used Vanessa Triana, Rakan, Annabelle like you know every game and he's G3 higher rank than me I don't understand how yeah I want to try to interview him one day we have Thrain who is like budget Rika yeah that's about it Thrain is just budget Rika <laughs> because when you pick him last and they fail to strip him because you luck sack them you're just gonna start pumping dots and stun like Rika and you're gonna die and you're gonna laugh because Thrain is hilarious and then I have some of the uh, other things I have right here I pick Tyrannus sometimes when I see Molong Icarus and Tyrannus is a very annoying thing to deal with because he just can't he just, he's like cockroach he just refused to die like Lulu very annoying unit War Young I lost to War Young Cleave a lot but then those are people with 330 speed swift rune I deserve to lose if you don't have God tier 330 speed rune then uh, good luck trying to use her Eleanor Eleanor Ele something budget Molly to me shitty healing Passive doesn't seem like it's working, and uh, I might, might as well use Amelia or Lulu. Spectra. Spectra is legit. Yeah? You see Cleaver down there in Conqueror. You pick a Spectra, they'll be screaming. How can you outspeed a Spectra? 326 base speed. If you only you have 200 bonus speed, which is very easy with Spectra. Okay? Only 200 bonus speed. You can outspeed a Bastet with a speed leader. It's kind of crazy. All right. Um, That was... That has been way too long. Way, way too long. I'm sorry. Why are you why are you watching this? Who watched until the end? Are you crazy? But thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, there are many other units. I might have missed one or two, like you know, Christina, Theomas, Bella, for example. Because they are used very, very rarely. I never see them. If I don't see the unit, I just don't know the unit exists. But that's just my observation for the RTA recently Vega is kind of here and there but not really yeah Vega is kind of just here and there because he's so easily controlled so he's here and there but not really anywhere we have triple nemesis Veladrill to deal with more that can be something as well but yeah let me know what you think about the uh, tier list down below. Might be missing some unit here and there. But that's my quick little tier list for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.